Congrats to BOD or oh no tears for SSR, the final English team falling out in the knockout space. But no. honestly, they they've given us such a great show this round. They can hold their heads up high. I think the crucial point for them was really on that. Um, was it the attack? Yeah, Harbour City they're attack. attack. Yeah, their attack. Yeah, that that was really a game for them to dominate and go through. And huh? unfortunately. You know, these things happen in CBL, right? In CBL, stakes are high, you know, mistakes can be made, you know, so... Uh. Well, right, honestly, I don't... It doesn't really matter who went through. I'm just happy we got a really good game. Okay, we get a... bro. Yeah. Even us, man. We, we, actually, we actually thought that... Uh... SR won because there was two players from the uh, SR that was guarding their base and I'm surprised that they let actually someone touch it. I didn't even see the hero. I checked it. I didn't see anyone there. But such, I think the DV actually paid off, you know. <laughs> Why one guys? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I mean, whatever it may be, right? Uh, these kinds of things happen in CBL. One mistake, one small mishap, one small mistake costs you the game. I think SR played a lot more fights better, but these small mistakes are also part of it, you know. Such is luck is also part part of it. Uh, unlucky, I guess. But props to them. SR gave us a really, really good fight. I really like how they played mostly on their attack. I think their attack was really, really good compared to the defense. I don't know if they attack a lot more than the defense. Um, it was quite good, except for the part that the, the final circle on how they controlled it. Uh, it was a re really, really good showing by them. Um, I guess that's the end of the line for them, right? This is the lower bracket. So yeah. It was really nice seeing SSR there. Unfortunately, let's, let's, let's take like a 30-second break for the next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink some water. GG, but <laughs> but speak ECL, yeah, yeah. My bad, guys. We we show in CPL and now we are trolling commentators. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man! I didn't troll versus BPJT. Well, at least we sounded convincing. I bet a lot of guys were <laughs> let off. <laughs> you guys got prank, guys. You got got prank. Now we know it all the time. I think I know joking. that you guys were actually listening. You know. Yeah. If you guys right. not listening, then we, of course, uh, yeah. Huh. I think we're it, a bit behind on schedule, actually, because of how long that match took us. Can you show us the button pick decks real quick? Okay, I can show you, but I don't know if the OB will show. Okay, so YS, BZZW, both teams coming from mainland China. Wait, if I'm not wrong. Let me just check my notes. Yeah, both teams coming from mainland China. So these are teams, both teams that... Went up through their knockout phases, you know, going perfect score, but now both teams were knocked out uh, back into the lower bracket. So these teams are, both teams are definitely familiar with each other because they play in the same server, right? So they know each other. I'm sure this will be a very exciting match for both teams because um, it's not just about CBL. It's also bragging rights, especially when you're on the same server. So um, just going to talk you tr everyone through the band picks. YS, Manning, Harbour City. BZZW banning Hidden City. Now, in turn, YS choosing Kurok Castle. So, we are really lucky to see Kurok Castle on attack uh, this round. And BZZW choosing Heilong Fort as their attack. Now, surprisingly, for YS, for their unit bans, they chose to ban Loyal Guards, Herbardus Sergeants, and the Zakirian Militia Ball Boys. And choosing to protect the Shenji Grenadiers. So, Shenji Grenadiers could be the. Uh, Unit for YS and opting to ban loyal guards, helper sergeants, ball boys. You know, we already see the um, the strongest 443 com, you know, gone out of the table. So we will definitely see a lot more other units like berserkers, etc. Now, BZW, on the other hand, they did not ban any units at all. Okay, they only chose to protect their mobile battalion. So on this game itself, on this series <laughs> itself, we only see three ban units. I, I actually. Knew that I, I talked about this earlier, and I, I actually someone would actually 
like intentionally not wanna eat it, but I guess now we actually see it that yep. uh, BZW or BZW actually didn't ban any units at all. You know, they want to Good keep shit. their they they want to keep the options open. You know, they just they want to play this match at maximum capability. So the match has started. We're seeing Varangian guards coming in from YS. I haven't seen this unit for quite a bit. It's been nerfed. And definitely, you know, I don't think it's a good unit to bring. It lose it. it it's only good on a 1v1. And, you know, I'd rather not uh, have diff other units than that kind of unit, to be honest with you. Flamethrower or Narfan guards and Falconity coming in from YS. And Shenji Kennedy is coming in from YS. Two Shenji Kennedy is also. Axe Trader coming in from BZZW, one Shenji only from BZZW. A lot of pikes coming in from them. Mostly infantry. I only see four cavalry on the side of YS and around six cavalry coming in from BZZW. So a lot of infantry fights are going to be here. Four, three long swords actually coming from BZZW. A lot more heavies. Eight heavies. Yeah, eight heavies coming in from BZZW and... Six heavies from YS. Mm -hmm. A lot of muskets coming in. You're gonna see stake down, down those these mortars, you know, slowing down the pushes with those annoying cal tropes. Mm -hmm. So and importantly, YS has those Falconetti gunners on these AV points, which is really strong. They can zone out basically a whole choke point for as a defender. <laughs> so of course, Halo Fort, one of my favorite maps. I think it's probably one of your favorite maps as well, right? Yeah. Gonna be really quick, you know. Not gonna see those boring siege towers moving up forward. It's gonna be fast paced. I think just eight minutes on the initial phase. Uh, BZXW on the attacker side has to decide, you know, how they're gonna actually take down one point because we've seen a couple of times in this CBL, you know, if a defender is able to choke successfully on the AB point, you know, this game could just be gone in just eight minutes. So, um, yeah, let's get this game rolling. Let's see how the attacker set up. Ah, it's good. Ooh. Check this out, Rice. Instead of the traditional of having 10 heroes on A and 5 heroes on B, they're opting to do the other way around, having 10 heroes on B and 5 heroes on A. Now, we, of course, we know as a, de as a defender, B point is much easier to defend due to the fact that you've got a supply point right there and, and you're able to resupply a new troop for the enemy attackers is being locked in fighting on the B point itself. So if BZXW is able to take down the B point fast enough with the unit advantage and hero advantage they have now, they could be really putting themselves ahead. But of course, you know, they're really taking their time to bring down this main gate. And at this point of time, I'm sure YS has already seen the, the lineup that the attackers are doing and rotating uh, accordingly. Yeah. To be honest with you, it will be the time to shine for these scary units, the Falconetti, the Narfan Guards, the Shenji Grenadiers, but remember that YS has it, BZZW only has one. So, with this multiple carry units coming in from uh, YS, they can definitely play on the two waves and have them both at the same time. And these are the things that will be crucial for these fights on the infantry, mostly with this slow pace or no, no cavalry coming in from the sides of uh, both teams on the first wave. Actually, BZZW, one guy changed into Northern Lands or Leo, Leo mm -hmm. Rangers. They're going into this B breach or B broken wall Ooh. area. Okay, okay. So looking at the defenders, they actually force a rotation out from the Falcon Anti Gunners to come and defend the B point. But oh. Yep. The, the call is made, you know, everyone is to move to the A point. That's the point that the attackers want to take right now, you know, trying to out-rotate the defenders. But of course, it's such a small map, so it doesn't take long to move from right, left to right. And of looking at the YS, most of the heroes are on the wall and rotating their troops to match the attackers. This is just all about, you know, matching the numbers. At this stage, each player from the defender has to be on high alert, you know, calling out, you know, where the enemy is going. This this can't just be a one-man job for the commander to to instruct where the troops are going. It's yeah. going to be an effort to try to um, prevent the attackers. Ooh, the attackers are stepping to B-bridge. 
Honestly, I really props to YS. So far, looking at this, what they're doing or what they're what they've been doing is rotating on the clock, on matching the numbers of the enemy. They're not over rotating. They have matched the numbers properly, and they are looking at these people on the wise. They're not giving Y. Oh, sorry, BZZW the inch to move. Now that the, every time that they rotate, they're actually matching the rotations of these. Um, BZW players. Now they're going into A. They're rushing into A. Falconetti oh. Gunners are exposed. Okay, but the, the spear wasn't able to do anything to those Falconetti Gunners. But of course, the biggest thing was that it forced a whole rotation of the defenders to come out of their sweet spot on the A to a position. And the attackers can actually expose the defenders right now. Ooh, uh, oh, one, one guy flanking. One guy flanking on these uh, Falconetti Gunners. Falconetti Gunners and Shenji actually being protected here. This is not a good or too good of a push from uh, Business W if they don't deal with this Falconetti and Shenji Grenadiers. Of course, again, looking at the timer, it's just about four minutes left. So definitely, there's not enough time for, for each team to bring out the all three troops that they have. They have to, the attackers have to take one fight quickly enough. If not, they're just yeah. going to get zoned out. BZZW is just moving as one big blob here. They're trying to pick off the enemies or YS enemy, uh, units that are not together. YS being quite split quite uh, right about now. And they're actually losing B-point while they're trying to protect these Falconetti Gunners. Yep. Falconetti Gunners actually is dead. Oh, wow. It, it nice dive dead. by the calf. Yeah. There's only like two Falconetti Gunners left. Okay, so at this stage, what's most important is that BZW still has a snowball coming through and it'll only get bigger as the defenders are losing more and more troops down to BZW. Again, the attackers spawn so close on the A point they're able to muster in with more and more troops. So the key thing now is how how well is B, B sorry, YS the defenders able to match the push and the aggressiveness from coming out from the uh, attacker side. It looks like they've got full war control now, BZZW, even though they're taking so much time to do so, you know, they've successfully succeeded in breaking through one part portion of the YS defense. A lot of ballistas going down. Yeah. This is very, very, very hard for YS to be able to respond to this. They still have five more artillery, but I don't see any of their pre-mates left. I only see one more tower coming in, but they're still trying to all in A. BZW has so much artillery here, it's going to be devastating to try to even move into the point. They have to sacrifice these units in. They're going to start capping A point quite soon right now, and they have to come here. They have to decide, are we all inning or are we not all inning? Yep. I mean, at this stage, you know, it's going to be big for YS if they commit to this A defense is really an all-in because I'm sure many of their heroes are on their second go troop. But really how do you? Fighter. Yeah, how do you fight against the RT setup of the attackers? I mean, BZW is in the point already. Now the the, the role the oh, roles have been reversed. The calf, look at the calf. You know, not doing anything from the defender side. You know, just feeding the Falcon Forte Brasho. More and more calf just going one by one. But look at the double Falco. Se Forte setup, sorry, down there by BZZW, stopping all those juicy, yeah, it's not, juicy. It's not even on F1. One of them is in F1 formation, one of them isn't. You know? So they're, they're still trying to stabilize this area, but BZZW, with all this artillery not being dealt with, they, they just have free reigns. They have free reigns to use all of these ballistas, these rape shots, these gold shooting uh, YS and obviously these trebuchets. 1 minute and 30 seconds left, but it's already 80% cap. A lot of people dead from YS and there's 700 units left versus 1,100 or 1,050 left Ooh. from BZZW. Of course, YS, YS has actually... that, 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 that uh, what do you call that, the Shenji Grenadiers behind, you know, trying to do as much damage to those helpers down there. But it's just not enough time to buy for the A point. A point wow. has been captured. Captured, captured. Yeah. Now looking I at the unit count, I think this is huge, huge losses to the defender side. Um do you think it's possible to come back? No. Zero yeah, I think, percent. I think zero, zero, zero percent. percent. No way. They've lost two golds basically or two waves already of their units and BZW Half of them probably, or more than half of them, only has used one unit, and probably half of them have used their second unit. So they still have their second unit. Some of them even have their first unit, and I don't think it's YS is gonna be able to come back from this devastating 
lost. See the cop of YS, a lot of them on blues, a lot of them on whites, a lot of them on greens, and a lot of them on two deaths. And that's scary. That's very scary. Uh, I, I would be very surprised if BZXW doesn't take this game, but... Oh, I would be. So <laughs> I would be too. That would be the biggest choke of CBR. Yeah. Biggest stroke on history, actually. I don't think anyone has lost this kind of game. This is yeah. a W just going into C right now. They know that these guys are on two deaths. They know that these guys doesn't have the proper units to fight them. And they are just going one YS spear actually tries to go in there, but... Don't you think YS was really, really naive? Sending in the calf straight into a Forte Brasho setup oh. down there. I don't you know, think I... they had a choice because no, their they units... Had... But they had Nafas and Shenjis on the other side, you know. It'd be best if they just let the Shenjis and Nafas do a little bit of damage and then just flow in once the... I think the, the big thing the... is they lost the Falconetti on the first wave. And the Falconetti didn't even do that much damage. Right? They, yeah, they, true. Fought, they fought separately. Number one, they fought separately. Um, They didn't utilize in maximum potential of the Falconetti, where you want the enemy to blob up. If they're separated, obviously you cannot shoot two areas at the same time, right? So that's the number one thing wrong. Second, it died. The Falconetti actually died. It died to one Northern Lance or Leo Ranger and one Claymore. And the uh th those things are just very devastating. You have this high leadership unit just dying like that. And it's supposedly the unit that will be carrying your push and if you don't have this push right then it's just uh if you lose it that fast utilizing at best then it's just hurtful very very hurtful you see so much mortars coming in from these as a w six yeah. i see six mortars they're just bombing that area yeah honestly you can just rush through all those fights down there there's a lot of whites but these as a w wants to rt they don't want to give YS, the inch, they want to demoralize them, show dominance. But it's definitely the right play. Play on your strengths, don't overcommit or don't be overconfident. Anything can happen. They're going in a two-way push, big push from the bridge side to the supply point of the defenders. Oh, and then a lot bad. of mortars coming in. Oh, they actually got a Shenji alive, the defenders. Now, now the calves are going in. No, a lot not... of pikes. Look at this infantry blob coming in from the bridge. Oh, this, this should be a teammate. This should I be mean, a teammate. This is not looking too good for OIS. A lot of heroes just dropping like flies from YS side. Obviously, white units cannot hold versus these high tier units. It's just over, man. This is bullying. Ah. Someone call the police. Oh, what the? Do you guys see that? But I don't know what hero actually had like some highlight symbol on top of that. Some diamond. Did you see that? The glaive? No. I must be seeing things. I don't know what's that. What happened? Okay, never mind. I was safe that. I have no idea. One of the hero from the BZ of the raid team just became like highlighter and then there's like a sound like a ting sound on top of it. That didn't happen know. to me. Maybe you have a problem next. I have so many problems, bro. You don't want to know my problems. Okay. We can see BZZW taking the first game here in a dominant fashion. This game wasn't even close, guys. This game wasn't even close. They had so much trebs more. They had so much artillery more. They even dropped artillery just for the sake of it. Even they could have just brute forced their way, but they wanted that 100% sure win. And BZZW comes on top 100%. What price? Not seeing ECL here. Stop it, Nick. You're making me sad, man. <laughs> Hopefully, on the second game of YS and BZZW, YS can, you know, try to utilize this carry units more that they're trying to, like, bring. Because if they don't use it at their full potential, then there won't be... There would be a fight from them. They their unit comp or a lot of their troops rely on it. And on an infantry blob, it's definitely a hundred percent more viable than what the other team brings, but they're not using it properly. So BZW comes on top. Mm -hmm. I think W even they took so long to to take down one point. 
No delaying left and right. Oh, no, that was pretty close. One minute and that was 40, pretty... 30 seconds. Yeah, one minute and but 30 seconds left. Still, I think BZW is a much superior team in terms of the team fight. They have the block fights uh, well done. You know, long swords, you know, healing, you know, buffing, getting the additional move speed so that their heroes in the front, like the pikes, short swords, bow X, has that move speed to clean up the retreating heroes. BZW looking like a very tough team to beat. Um, so YS needs to really try to reorganize themselves. If you can't, you have, they have to do something about BZXW's team fight. You get what I mean? You know, if you're going to match a snowball team like that, 15 men just pushing through, you know, you have to play to your strength, which is the carry unit, right? You know, yeah. because no matter how tight you are, no matter how many troops, how many uh, heroes you have, you know, one Nafan guard can just barbecue everyone. That's so if, if they are able to protect that, that carry troops in the next fight, you know, they're able to swing the series back into their favor. So let's see. Bones up. Kurak Castle. Picked by YS. Wow. Kurak Castle. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Last time I've seen Kurak was... OSU, um, was it? OSU versus... Why, why, why? I think it's it was why, why? No, BPJT, BPJT. Ah, BPJT, yeah. Yeah, it was and a. In, got... It was a hard win from BPJT mm -hmm. uh, versus OISU. Wasn't even a match where OISU tried to brute force the gate uh, on two waves, not one but two waves. Uh, it just cost them the game. Uh, basically, they went into forty brushes. They went into imperial pikes. And those units just killed everything. Oh no, sorry. I think you're... It's against BPJL. No, BPJT. Is it? Yeah, I watched it with you. Wait. No, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kura wasn't yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. scoring phase. Correct, correct. My bad. Uh, you guys got uh, yeah. pranked again. It's your bad decks. I'm not at fault here. Hopefully we'll be able to see any changes on YS because without these changes, I don't think they're taking the game versus BZW. They just look more dominant than BZW or sorry, than YS in this match. They they picked off the units one by one that weren't positioned properly. They moved this one big snowball coming into these uh, fights and they set up the RT really, really well. They didn't rush. They didn't do, they didn't overextend. You know, they had the patience to keep moving back and forth and back and forth, A and B, A and B, A and B, just to give that small opening that they need, that BZZW was trying to achieve. YS wasn't ready for that. Falconetti died. Chenji died. I didn't even see the Northern Guard being used properly. So, yeah. Let's shift the topic to Kurak Castle. I mean, um, I, if I recall properly, uh, they, the devs actually made some major changes to the map this season, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. What, what were some changes that, that really stood out to you, that, that really surprised you, and why do you think they made those changes? Um, for me, right, the A point on Kurak Castle is most likely the same. It that didn't really change as much. It changed a lot more on the final base and on the B area. Where on the B area, you actually have a supply point hidden uh, on the back side, and the B point actually being blocked by these small buildings where your troops can actually hide that. Uh, it's not going to be on trap zone. Um, it's hard to hit with your ballistas or cools. You need those specific angles or areas to be put on those stuff. Obviously, the mortars are definitely going to be god sent or the, the best pick there but the supply point is just there you know mm -hmm. so uh the, the, i think like on the b area i think there's an option for the defenders to be able to defend that area mm -hmm. not which is the usual or the traditional style which b just always gets given on mm -hmm. yeah. uh on this old kura castle map also mm -hmm. the final base right if you see the final base the final base is a lot more exposed mm -hmm. um there's definitely this like outer ring but there's three areas and a big staircase 
on the upper side of the uh the final base so it's kind of scary if you would would ask me if you were the defenders to be able to defend the final mm-hmm. base perfectly there so. I think last time last time this this it's a point and final base which was just really hard easy choke points to hold as a defender and really hard for the attackers but now it's yeah. really open up to have more angles to attack the final base so yeah i really like the changes as well you know to Kurok castle it's always been a defense defender prominent map but now it's more balanced of course let's take a look at the lineup ys mpz zw ys on the attack now they bring a lot of fortes yeah, they have five forty browsers. Oh, one guy switched out. Four forty oh. browsers. Uh, Claymore and Impike coming in. Three Impike actually. Four mm-hmm. Impike coming in from YS. Oh, they change. Okay. What yeah, about I think it? I think that that is really trying to help them into the. These are the W coming in with four shield maiden, one Falconati, and two Shanji Grenadiers. That's right. the carry units. So YS opting to have more utility, more unit control. Where BZZW just going for the pure then. Actually, BZZW actually has one more carry unit than YS. YS took out the Narfan guard, the Sip Siponahori. Okay, I won't say it again. Um, they only have one Falconity and they only have one Shenji Grenadier, while the BZZW actually has two Shenji Grenadier and one Falconity. So that they're one up on them. So let's see if it's gonna be used properly this time. Hopefully, it will be on the YS side. Um, they will be able to play it a lot more properly. We'll be able to see a lot more blob fights, a lot more group fights, and four, four or five shield maiden coming in from BZZW. We'll see this unit. Actually, was Lower Guard banned? Yes, Lower Guard, yes. How about the Sergeants and War yeah. Boys? Yeah, Lower Guard was indeed banned, so that's why I'm not like seeing them on this match. Seeing quite a bit of Mermelons also from the BZW. Let's go! So final game possibly for the night. You know, YS is definitely on the back foot right now. Having to go up against BZW in this attack, you know, being one nil down. So let's see how they're going to come back, try to come back into this series. Oh, a lot of spawns on the B side. Half the team spawned, seven people or eight people spawned on the B side or the left side of Kura Castle on the mm-hmm. side of YS. Of just course, out. you know, BZZW has the option to build their own Calvaries, you know, playing a little bit more traditional by taking out the Siege Towers. But, you know, due to the, how to say, the angles of the Siege Tower, we've got two in the front. One on the Ooh. left. Do you see this cheeky spot? Look at the the right area of the BZZW. There's two culverins on under this palm tree. Do you see that? Near the right side. Ah, of the yeah, 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 yeah. What are two culverins here? Oh, three. They have this three culverin spot, and it's actually hitting the um siege tower, the right siege tower of. But Why that's, yes. that spot is trebable, right? If the attackers spot it. I don't think the attackers will be able to spot it. Is it? Is it spotted? They're not even trebbing it. Hmm. They're taking it down. Three cool virins is enough. And they're if letting look, the left side mount easily. If you, if you look at the defenders, BZXW, they've already committed nine artillery. It's just six artillery left. So definitely their strat is to try to delay these siege towers as long as they can. Um, yeah. They, they want to fight actually, on point. If you actually look at BZZW on poking the hole or looking at the hole on the siege on the right siege tower, it's actually pretty nice to see these spots. I've Never seen this spot. It's mostly that palm tree area. Yeah, where where the coax is. I don't know if yeah. the OB is picking it up. But, hey, One player from BZXW Disconnects, yeah. The question is whether he's able to reconnect back in time because, you know, we yeah, yeah, he did, he did, he did. He, okay. got, he got back in. He got back. Thank goodness. He's just responding now? Or if not, we'll see an SSR versus BOD. <laughs> 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 Why is so mean to Kublai, man? Huh? 
No, he disconnected. Oh, he disconnected. Okay, okay. disconnected. Blame me on the ping. It's just kidding, uh, just kidding. This is a W. Oh, Wyatt actually gets a kill on the front gate or actually frontal area. Each towers still trying to mount. The palm tree area still doing well on this um, siege tower. Yeah, a but lot of mediums coming the... in from YS on the left tower. Though. YS still at this stage hasn't spotted the covering setup there. I, I can't really... believe that, that they can't they doesn't spot this though. This is impossible. This is the they should trick... spot it by now. And it's trebable. I think I'm very sure it's trebable. Maybe not. I mean, on this map itself, you have one, two, three. I, I think actually it's in range, yeah. It's actually in range. You have eight traps on the attacker side. So trap is such a huge advantage, especially if you're able exposed in the um, trap spot. So again, that left switch down might just go down. Yep, going down. Oops. Oh, a short sword got caught up by BZXW. Oh. Whoa! He just teleported back into the main gate. That was quick. Whoa. Did you see that? Yeah. What? Latency, guys. Latency. Lag, lag, lag. I'm lagging. Lag, lag, lag. I'm lagging. Yeah, you're lagging. <laughs> lag. Why is getting a big push? A huge push on the left side. They have probably around 10 heroes here, if I'm not wrong. They're actually opting to get this B area. B... This probably shakes the whole plan of DZZW's mm -hmm. plan to hold A. Because they don't have much setup here. YS has full wall control. They took out those culverines, the pre-made culverines, or, or rather the culverines that were put down by BZZW. YS Correct. has a big push coming in here. They have all artillery ready. Correct, but there's just one real attack path down into the B point, which is going to be that stairs down there. They put but, grip shots on top. Have, but they <gasps> have RT ready, though. Why they that's put the grip shots point. down there? That's, that's for the supply point, 100%. Can you they reach? want the supply. Yeah, it reached, it reached, it reached, 100%. It's not like it's for close. full grip shots, right? But It's not purple. <laughs> and why, one guy just cups it, yeah? Ooh, okay. Falconetti oh, coming in up. from both sides. Falco trying to suppress the artillery but the other Falcon that is trying to shoot back, you're not yep. getting our artillery for nothing. No. Oh, 8 point, getting kept by YS. So BZXW mm. choosing to give out an 8 point. It's so just that rotation down there, putting a little bit of pressure. Ooh, that, that's, point that's pretty now. bad. That's pretty bad. And they committed like, 14 artillery on the defender side. Just to lose A like that, yeah? Oof. That's pretty bad. Ugh. I think YS has control of the map now. Yep. Or the game now. Because they have 18 artillery, it doesn't matter if this artillery on B will work or not, they still have one more set. Mm -hmm. And why is this going to slowly take their time to cap B point, you know? Ooh, Falconetti dies. Falconetti dies on BZZW. Wow. Black Mortar hot shot. 2 out of 10. They, they, actually, they actually went for top 3 Falco, huh? while YS went for bottom 3. Yeah. Shotgun Falco believers. So BZXW Falcos lost losing that tennis match down there. So it's fun to see both Falcos shooting each other, you know. Right, so you're a Falco player. Every time you see an enemy Falco, do you kind of like get heated? Like, no, there's only one Falco in this game. No. Oh, I already know, man. <laughs> I already know. So, Whoever sits down first on a team fight wins. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of trouble. It's, it's like playing, playing the, you know, it's the skin called musical chess. Whoever sits down first wins. But of course, now we look at BZ, uh, sorry, the YS, the attacker side. You know, having 15 artillery, 10 traps. Now, of course, if we look at this Kurok Castle map, there's not a lot of zones to trap into the final base. There's the only... only... Option Wait, there's only one artillery left and he put it down, BZZW, on top of the wall on home base. He's oh, trying yeah. to destroy the artillery there. It's a culver in there. He's trying to get those cheeky shots in, you know? Yeah, so but we look at... only have two bullets left. Yeah, let's look at the final base map, you know. Of course, we've always had 
option to go up. You know, that's always been one of the most popular ways to 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 force a rotation from the defenders, right? But now we have this path where the attackers can can fight the defenders on the top of the wall, on the left hand side. Yeah. And that's all travelable, mind you. Yeah. So honestly, when when I when I'm on top of this wall and there, right, I just shake my boots because the trap can be coming anytime. Yeah, and it, Ooh, it's really... what, what, if you actually look at YS, uh, they have put three mortars down on the right side of the wall. This is actually an old strategy on Kurakasa. So if you watch like super old maps on Kurakasa one of the favorite RT spots of the attackers for the final base area. You just literally hit everything on this area and it's just very devastating for the defenders to give this area. You can see YS putting whites there, baiting the good units out from BZZW, monitoring them and mm -hmm. trebbing them. They're trying to get as much value as them and it's a really, really strong, smart strategy coming in from YS. I really, really love this doing. Shoe made uh, a bit of friendly yeah. fire there. Yep. Oh, they're committing their good units here, but oh, the shield maidens might die. This might be a mistake. Yeah, but eight good traps again from the attackers. Now, of course, if that trap was a little bit on the stairs Ooh. point, those troops. Shenji get... threw from the ground. Ooh. ECL does that, but also, that's a really cool move, by the way. ECL question mark. Who's that? Who's that? I don't know. Some randoms. Now, of course. At this stage, you know, we are talking about the final base down here. You know, the biggest risk uh, of the defenders is, is that if you lose too many heroes or troops too quickly, right? You know, it's going to take at least 30 or 45 seconds for your reinforcements to come in. So that could be enough time for the attackers to set up on final base. And basically, as a defender, you don't you have no choice to come back and, and defend that, that uh, final point. Now, what I've seen work a lot of times is, especially in my Siege games, is a lot of teams opting to rush through the the left gate. You get what I mean? Yeah. Into the enemy supply, into the final base supply. Because if you're able to send seven or eight units and troops in, and capture that supply point, you know, the, the defender can't ignore it. You know, you have to take that supply point to stabilize your final base. And that actually buys a lot of time for the other side to, to clear out the final base. You know what I mean? Definitely, yeah, definitely. It's like a TW strategy, you know, territory war strategy. So, of course, you know, TikTok time is ticking down. You know, I'm sure at this stage, both sides still has very healthy um, high-tier troops. I wonder if the OB will show it. Yep. So, both sides has more than 800... Uh, Tier 3 to up to tier 5 troops. That's a lot. That's at least 3 waves more to fight. But if YS is able to take their time, you know, to try to, to, to reduce the unit count to their advantage, you know, they, they could set themselves up for a very good final base push. Definitely. It's looking like they're wasting quite a lot of time, though. Like, I know that the, they're trying to do, do as much as they can, but I don't see any of these artillery doing good shots, you know? They're not engaging, they're not picking off units. Okay, looks they're like just... YS given up the war. They want... they're, they're just letting BZZW heal their units back and forth in the supply point. They should go, man. When these units come through there, they should go. Okay, that is a two-way push. Yep. Right, we see the big push coming from YS down there, Mimir Lons, of course, taking the lead. To break open, you no know, more downs just falling down quick. Um, both sides, you know, having a oh, dagger X lenses actually got through, got through yeah. into, the, into the front got line. You the know, the uh, that's actually very surprising, correct. And look at that, the dagger X doing so much work cleaning up the children's services, dying for free. Of course, now rolling back, you know, skill number two is activated, so they got to be careful. All heroes have to be on high alert down here, even though the main gate uh got stopped. You know, the side gate actually for the attackers won their push and they were yeah. able to sandwich the... So one of the attackers should actually go to cancel the supply of uh, BZZW, but no one's cancelling. Seven of them resupplying. 
eight of them resupply, nine of them resupplying, and no one's stopping them to resupply. Yep, then the defenders in turn has their calf out with the forte brush shells. But what you really need now is infantry killers to kill those modals. Oh, the Ooh, cap that back back get through. But do remind oh, you that oh. this is the W is a lot of cavalry coming in. Eight of them got the resupply in. Why is coming through, but wow. the brace that's hurtful. Another cap coming in through from the side of BZZW. Killed five heroes. A lot of models retreating. Monastic Knights coming in, even NLC is coming in. They wiped them this wave. Whoa. I told you, man, someone has to stop that supply point. If it's just final base and you both all have units, do remember that your supply point is further than them and you need to cancel that supply point, man. It's super close. So that was huge losses coming from the attackers, YS. Honestly, they don't have much tier 5 troops. Wow. They should take the wall right now. Oh, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. YS is taking the wall right now. They should mm -hmm. set up their, their good units there, like actual good units there. Yeah, put some ballistas. Yeah. Um, of course, in order to counter cave, you either have to have pikes, you gotta have hussars, or you just use ballistas to reduce their unit count because cave don't have a lot of hit count down here. And BZXA does, W doesn't want to keep that wall up. Setting up a big team up to take retake back the wall. Cause that long sword down there, you know, a little bit too deep. Remember but, that there's only a few units on the base of BZZW. It's actually really very scary. Big. But of course they've got so much cap as we saw in the previous round. You know, if... Ooh, but I think they brought out all infantry. Now YS coming in, getting that early double kill. There's a Falcon the Gunners of YS is down there. It's exposed. Northern Lands trying to protect it, it actually got protected it. This is a W. Trying to get those Falconetti Gutters. There yeah, are doing a lot of hero so. killing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That pie just braced on the stairs there and Kev can't do anything to it down here. And this is really, really risky for... Ooh, a big flag coming in wow. from BZZW. And LC got through, killed the Falconetti, killed the shields. Now BZ YS actually has just a few Fortebrasho left on the point. They're gonna deal with a lot of heroes from uh, BZ, uh, BZZW. Yeah, BZZW still has that Shenji, Shiu Maidens, Halberts on point. You know, this is gonna be easy wipe. And of course, now they're gonna bring in their final troop. It's gonna be a lot of Kev coming through to hold this final base. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I'm just gonna call GG now. Yeah. 200 units down, and I'm pretty sure those 400 units that are left on YS are whites. Or mostly whites, rather. YS still wants to control the wall on the right side, so... But there's not much infantry, anti-infantry uh, troops. The... Yeah, that Shumei is going to do so much work down there. Yeah, at this stage, you know, the defenders can just push out. Coming in with so much Dagger X Lancer care. And we've seen, you know, with the changes recently to Dagger X Lancers, you know, they're actually on par with Cataphract Cavalry, right? Yeah, I honestly would take Dagger X than Cataphracts. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, but because Dagger X wins that for me. You talk the to me about the difference between Cataphracts and Dagger X. Like, the. The charge is slow. Obviously, on Cataphract, your cover commander or the number two skill is a lot more longer, right? Obvious. Uh, by the way, YS is already leaving the battle. It's a definitely two zero for BZZW, just like their old match where it was also a two nil start or stop for YS versus BZZW. So. YS will be dropped out of the tournament uh, and BZZW continues mm -hmm. with their last life. Anyway, as I was saying, right, Cataphracts like have more unit count and their cover commander or their number two skill is actually a lot more better than like the AI pathing is a lot more better than the Dagger Axe Lancer. But the Dagger Axe Lancer has so much more damage and so much more burst potential with how tanky it 
actually is is very very insane so mm-hmm. i would rather have that if, if you've known you've tried it you guys will know what i'm talking about and i'm pretty sure everyone uh, is playing that unit now yeoman is dead for us so it's dagger axe season or meta rather yep uh, gg to ys you know they've shown some glimpse a few glimpses of um really good gameplay but they're not just consistent enough to match up against peace we, we we honestly this um, wasn't really really close i think bzxxw has a really good gameplay you know very good team fights you know i love to see teams you know opting to go for that 15 man push rather than just going for split pushes all the time you know this is really the true this is the 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 highest point of cb they can get you know having 15 guys working together as a team each having different classes different units you know but having the same objective you know each unit you know doing their job shoe maidens you know for example you know killing infantry sustaining calf coming to support those infantry pikes trying to to to, to defend against you know, this is cb la, 15 man game yeah gg gg to the teams that play today honestly you know ssr and uh bod's fight was uh very close on the second and the third game the first game wasn't too close um but the second and third game was indeed close so that was a lot of enjoyment hopefully for everyone i really enjoyed that series uh bz w showing dominance here versus ys um so they'll be continuing on the tournament rather than uh ys so props to them ggs thank you for competing obviously both of these teams came from the uh, china mainland server so these are new faces to us or the people that are interested or that are watching cbl for multiple seasons now or even just one season back so yeah it's good to see new faces new teams new strengths you know getting those players in and getting a more fun tournament for yeah. cb in general so of course now we've just got seven more days of cbl left um it's going to be just a marathon of cbl games back left right center today we saw of course uh four teams from the losers bracket uh playing against each other two teams going out you know same with yesterday and they'll fade, continue on their path in the losers bracket to try to win that bracket to get up to the finals now again the final is going to be the, the winner of the winners bracket against the losers of the winner of the losers bracket so tomorrow we're gonna to have games ing versus hey yeah ing versus osu it's gonna be a good game yeah yep and then saturday tw sunday monday tuesday hey wednesday thursday and friday so wow cbl is really coming to end ready on now literally our last seven last week yeah we'll be able to see the teams that are going to be finishing uh the top four soon on the cbl uh itself right uh one by one teams are getting knocked out one by one teams are advancing and obviously when we see that final top four then uh that's when uh two more series will come into light uh, obviously yep okay so i guess that's it from us again it's Dex and Resace from ECL. You know, we hope to see you guys soon. If you like it, you know, please let the devs know. Hopefully they can ask us to come back again to cast again. And of course, um, stay safe, everyone. Have a good night. Hi, guys. Happy New Year, by the way. Woo! Thank you for watching. <laughs>